dear audience, next about 20 minutes, you will understand about subtle energy and its regulation through yoga. And your understanding will be more comprehensive by knowing about subtle energy, health according to subtle energy regulation and subtle energy measurement tool and evidence-based studies role of yoga on subtle energy regulation. So what is subtle energy? What is you know? All the traditional systems of medicine recognize subtle energy, the fundamental stuff in nature. And it has enormous effect for our human health. And the subtle energy in our Indian systems of medicine, in Ayurveda or yoga, it is called prana, a pranic energy or vital energy. This prana flows through subtle channels called med nadis. And midi nadis systems in the human body. In the same concept, it is postulated in traditional systems of medicine. According to traditional systems of medicine, the subtle energy called chi and chi flows through subtle channel called meridians and make a complicated meridian systems as a subtle system in our human body. There is total 12 major meridians, upper six, lower six, and meridians names related to Orge. Even when you see that or not is in the yoga sastra say there are major 12 nadis. Also sometimes it says also 14 nadis. But interesting things, please take on, see this picture. This picture will keep the similarity in both systems, Indian systems of medicine and traditional systems of medicine. This Indian system and traditional systems of medicine recognize the subtle energy as a prana or chi. And both, they believe the subtle channel, meridians, and nadis. And when you just look at the number of meridians and nadis, there is some similarities. There are total 12 major meridians along with two meridians, 14. Even when you just look at our yoga sastras, yoga sastra also says that there are 14 meridians out of 14, all we know that Ira, Pingala, and Sushumna. And when you look at this similarity, the Sushumna is very similar with one of the main meridians governing this. Not only that, when you just go to further deeper, the psychic center, both systems have the same concept. In Indian system, the psychic center we call chakras and traditional systems of medicine called dentin. There are three dentins, lower, middle, and upper. Even in our yogas also, lower chakras, middle chakras, and upper chakras. And both systems of medicine believe when prana purifies, it slowly moves upwards from lower to upper chakras. And it happens by various type of practices, by various type of practices. And in that yoga, there is various type of practice, as we know that asana, pranayama, meditation has enormous effect in our subtle energy system. Same, there are various techniques in traditional Chinese system of medicine, like acupuncture, acupuncture, tai chi, qigong. So through that, the subtle energy can be regulated. So how, that, how we can understand what is health according to subtle energy regulation? Health is maintaining by free flow of subtle energy in the subtle channel. Or proper regulation of prana or chi is indication of health. 
other side, when this chi or prana get disturbed to flow in the subtle channels, bring ill health at physical, mental, and emotional level. So how we can measure that? How we can measure that in this present, there is various tool based on electrodermal screening. And it measures the bioimpedance at the acupuncture point. And it gives that information about meridians activities and also G. And this work has been developed by Nakatini for three decades. And one of the reliable tool is Acograp, Acograp digital medium measuring device developed by Meridia Technologies. It's measured the meridian's activity at the acupuncture point and gives the information about meridians or chi energy. As we told that chi and prana is very similar even we can assume that information of prana from this aquifer. Based on this thing, one of the pioneer schools is Vyasa doing research on the role of yoga on energy regulation using this aquifer. And previous studies have found that regular practice of yoga program for a period of 20 days increase the level and regulation of chi or prana by using aquifer. Even other studies show very interesting reason. And it shows that when a practitioner practicing long period of time, long period of time, their energy regulation improve, their imbalances is very low. As we know that whenever a person gets stressed out, it's affect the pranamai kosha and bring that imbalances and subtle energy. So another more study proven when five days IIT program for stress management increased the prana level. And the people executed people had gone through IIT program. There was a very low energy and huge imbalances. And as they had gone through the five day stress management program as stress reduces, the energy increased and also balance imbalance reduced. So not only that, some other pathological condition also found that energy imbalances more. So with this concept, we have developed a few studies and one of the studies we have done one single asana padmasana. As we know that yoga sastra says that when a person sit in meditative posture, he could able to regulate the subtle energy. So aims of our study one, padmasana, to find out the effect of padmasana on energy regulation and to observe the flow of energy when a person sit in padmasana for a various period of time. And it was two group repeated measurements. Healthy yoga student were included in the study and a group of students sat in Padmasana 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and other group as a control group sat in chair 10 minutes, 20 minutes and 30 minutes for a consecutive days. And this aquaculture reading was taken as a pre and post audience. When you see that result, when you see the result in front of person, it has given very insightful result. And this table basically gives that understanding. Please look at is Padmasana and chair sitting. Basically, Akuga gives a 24 sitting because six uppers, six lower, bilaterally, it gives 24 meridian readings. So when 
the group sat in Padmasana for 10 minutes. You can see that out of 24 meridians, eight meridians increase that energy, 16 meridians decrease that energy. But what's happened? In the chair group, control group, there was no increase, but 24 meridians decrease that energy. And when we look at 20 minutes, please look at out of 24, 24 meridians increase that energy for Padmasana group. But in chair sitting group, only six meridian and 18 meridians decrease that energy. Not only that, when you're just looking at 30 minutes, even that's 23 meridians increase that energy. Once you, because there is the same energy pattern, you can hear also one meridian, so the same energy pattern, but 20 meridians decrease that energy and all the three meridians increase that energy for chair sitting. But you know, one of the interesting things, when you look at the overall energy, when you just put together the 24 meridians, and we see that in 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, there was no such changes in Padmasana and Chia, though here it is showing that, but there is no such change, a little increase in Padmasana group. And in Chia sitting, 10 minutes, there was a little decrease. But when you look at the 20 minutes, there was a huge changes. Padmasana group started to increase that energy significantly. And chair sitting group showed significantly decrease in 20 minutes. And when you look at the 30 minutes, the increase of energy significantly improved in Padmasana group and in chair sitting group there's more depletion of the energy. It was significantly decrease of energy in that part, chair sitting. So from this study, we can just see that as the previous studies, assessing the effect, there was no single uh, study on this asanas. Because previous study, though they have reported the various forms of yoga has effect on subtle meridians energy level. But this study has proven Padmasana has effect to influence the meridians and its effect to enlivel the chi or prana. As Yoga Sastra says that when a subject sits in Padmasana or other meditative postures, he could able to preserve that energy inside and allow the energy moves upward. That's why these meditative asanas are recommended for spiritual growth. So let's look at the next study. Another study we have done on mental disturbance report. As we know that whenever persons are mental disturbed, it's affect our subtle energy also. And that's why the second study or aims was to observe energy imbalances in person with anxiety and depression. And another, as a pilot study we have done, and there we just look at the role of yoga on energy regulation on that subject. So the, it was the three group study, anxiety, depression, and health. And then, by taking that reading from Acrograph, that analysis we did, and this table basically gives that energy pattern of the three groups and also between group differences. So here you can see that overall energy means 24 meridian reading, and then upper and lower energy also. So you can see that overall energy, anxiety, depression, and healthy group. I will not read out the decimal numbers, but you can see that higher energy was in anxiety group, lower energy 53 was depression group, and healthy group so in between. But we just look at that upper and lower, it was the same pattern. Anxiety group, 
was 86 and more. Depression group was low 54 and healthy group was in between 61. Even lower also gives same pattern. But I want to bring your attention. Please look at that AST, that variance, what we say here as an imbalance. This anxiety group and depression group, their variance was quite higher than healthy group. Anxiety group to 38, depression group showed the 33, and where that healthy group showed 27. So this SD actually gives that information how energy was imbalanced in this two pathological group, anxiety and depression group. Even if you look at it when we are just compared that upper and lower, upper to 38 for anxiety group, 32 for depression. Again, you see that 21, and that's all worth significantly different. Even lower also, though. In the lower, that healthy group also showed little higher imbalance. Again, if you look at the, this table, this table will give that within group comparison, within group comparison, within that anxiety, within the depression group and healthy group, we just compare upper and lower imbalance. As I told you, this Acrograms keep the reading upper meridians and lower meridians. And basically pathology people, that anxiety, depression people are having that huge imbalances, huge imbalances. You can see that in anxiety group, there is upper lower significant difference. Though there was less, and that was not significant difference in depression and healthy group also. So from this study, we can say that as the previous study reported, energy regulation is related to health and poor regulation is indicator of pathology, which corresponds with higher imbalance of meridian readings or energy. So in our study, this have shown that higher imbalances of energy in pathology subject in anxiety and depression then healthy individual and which confirmed the previous study. And not only that, when as a pilot study, we have seen that when the depression group, they had gone through seven days IYT program, all 14 days IYT yoga module for depression. You know, very interesting result we had got. The depression people slowly started to improve their energy, that energy increased towards the healthy. Not only that, that imbalances, that huge imbalances slowly reduce and it's just moved towards the healthy population. So from these studies, we can see that when pathological people, they are having that huge imbalance in the subtle energy level. And also these healthy people, they are having less imbalances. So beta regulation is related to better health. And also yoga has effect to regulate the subtle energy, make that energy balance. So as a conclusion from our whole study, we can see that the experiment have confirmed the meridian readings through aquagraph validate subtle energy as presented in yoga. And our Padmasana study proved Padmasana has a universal energizing effect on body subtle energy. And subtle energy flow is related to health as we show, showed you in that anxiety and depression group. Depression group, there was most imbalances. And as the depression people, they have taken that sugar model, their energy improves and balance also reduces. From there, we can say this better regulation is better health, or optimal regulation is optimal health. From these two studies, we published two papers 
one of the Padmasana studies we published in Aicha and this anxiety and depression republishes alternative and complementary medicines. Thank you. Thank you very much.